Welcome back to Mrs O'Gram's Maths. We are looking at kinematics today, which is just a fancy word for um, rates of change that involve displacement, velocity, and acceleration. Okay, so it's just a specific branch of rates of change um, to which we can apply differentiation and integration methods to work between these three things of displacement, velocity, and acceleration. Now, if we take now, if we take a second to think about how those things are linked, you can easily come up with the rates of change between them. So displacement, that is distance. So how far something has traveled. That's just a linear measurement of um, displacement in space. Okay. Then we move to velocity, which could also be thought of as speed. Uh, so we're talking about how far something has been displaced over time. So that gives us the speed. So the change in distance over the change in time gives us speed. And that sort of language should get you thinking about differentiation. So the change in distance over the change in time makes speed. Now, acceleration, that's how quickly the speed is increasing or, or decreasing. Um, although we just call it acceleration. If it was a deceleration, it would just have a negative. So we're talking about how much the speed is changing over time. And that gives us acceleration. So it's the rate of change of speed over the change of time. Now, the notation commonly used for each of these is that we call um, displacement S of t. Velocity is V of t. And acceleration is A of t. So we give it that function notation. Now, to get between each of these, uh, we are going to differentiate to get from one to the other. So then, of course, knowing what you know about calculus, you know that if you want to go the opposite way, we will need to do the opposite of differentiating. So if we know the acceleration and we want to work out the velocity, we can integrate. So as a quick little example, let's say we had a velocity function of 24 minus 10 t meters per second. Then we could use that to, um, we can uh, differentiate to get the acceleration. So the acceleration would then be minus 10 meters per second squared. And we could integrate it to get the displacement function. So integrating that, we get 24 t minus 10t squared over 2, so that becomes 5t squared plus c. Now, if we had some more information about that, we could work out what the c is. So um, if you knew where it was at a certain time, um, where t is usually time, so where this object is over time, uh, then you can work out what that missing c would be if you had a bit more information. Let's take a look at this example. A boomerang is thrown towards a point that's 12 meters away and returns back again. We've got an equation for the velocity, and from there we want to work out equations for the displacement and acceleration. So we've got this situation, we've got a, a point that's 12 meters away, and we're throwing our boomerang towards it and it's coming back again. Something like that. Okay, so if we want to get from um, velocity to displacement and acceleration, we know how to do that now. So we are going to go between those three things. If we're going to acceleration, we differentiate. If we go displacement, we would integrate. Okay, uh, we've been asked for the displacement first, so I'll start with that one. So displacement is um, our S function. To get that, we are going to integrate v. So we're integrating 2t minus 8 with respect to t. So that becomes 2t squared over 2, which just cancels to t squared, and then minus 8t plus a constant. Now that constant we can work out with the other little bit of information that you, you may not have um, picked up on, but this bit here, we're told that uh, that fixed point is 12 meters away. That gives us some information to work out the constant. So if we're throwing this boomerang away from us towards this fixed point, then we can set this equation as being the displacement from the fixed point. So when t is 0, s will be 
12 metres. So it'll be 12 metres away from our fixed point of the boomerang. Now it might be tempting to try and think about the displacement as being how far away it is from the person that threw it, but that's going to be very tricky to work out because we don't know when it gets to um, the turning point. We don't know how long that is. We have to work it out as displacement from the turning point. So when t is 0, we're 12 metres away. So if we put that into our formula, t squared minus 8t plus c must equal 12 when t is 0. So 0 squared plus 8 times 0 uh, plus c equals 12. So of course c is 12. And popping that into a sentence, we have t squared minus 8t plus 12 is the formula for the distance from the fixed point. OK, now let's take a look at acceleration. So this one's pretty straightforward. If we're looking for acceleration, we differentiate our velocity function. So that equals 2 meters per second squared. So in this particular case, our acceleration is a constant. Uh, it's constantly increasing um, at a rate of 2 meters per second squared. With that information, you might be asked some other questions, something like, um, what was the initial velocity? So if we're looking for initial velocity, that's right at the beginning. So when t is 0, so no time has passed, v would equal 2 times 0 minus 8. So our initial velocity would be minus 8 meters per second. In this context, remember, we're talking about the distance away from the fixed point it is, so the minus is telling us it's getting closer to the fixed point. So it's going towards the fixed point at a rate of 8 metres per second. And you could be asked all sorts of questions like this um, with different setups. You could be asked um, things like, at what time does it reach a certain distance away? At what time is it at a certain acceleration? Or all sorts of things that could go into these kinematics um, problems, but they're always about displacement velocity and acceleration and to do with differentiating and integrating between them according to their rates of change. All right, sorry, that video went a little longer than I was anticipating. I did end up stepping through it fairly slowly, so hopefully you still found it useful. Um, if you did, give it a like and it'll help other people to find this video too. Thanks.